As you all know, uh, we are celebrating today the external solemnity of Our Lady of the Rosary. The Feast of Our Lady of the Rosary will still be celebrated on October 7, which would be on this coming Thursday. But uh, as a... Uh, as, uh, it would be a weekday, so uh, the the the, the uh, Tridentine Mass was granted uh, the external solemnity of Our Lady of the Rosary on the first Sunday of October. This is to enable more people to join in the festivities in honor of Our Lady. Okay? So, uh, again, we are having our usual Masses from Wednesday until, sa until Sunday. Okay? And uh, it would be included on Thursday, we will celebrate again the Feast of Our Lady of the Rosary on the actual date that was uh, assigned to it uh, in the old calendar of the church. Now, I think I've told you this before, that uh, the first reading is really not about Our Lady. Okay? It is not about Our Lady. Many of us mistakenly think that the first reading today speaks of Our Lady. But how can it refer to Our Lady when the speaker of the first reading says that uh, in the beginning, uh, before everything else was made, I was set up from eternity, even before the earth was made. Even before the depths were uh, dug, even before the fountains of waters have sprung out, even before the mountains were established, I was already present. When he prepared the heavens, I was already present. And that definitely cannot be our Lady, because it would it would if, if we say that the speaker of the first uh, reading is Our Lady, then you might as well be telling me that Our Lady existed even before time began, which is not true. Now remember that Our Lady was and is a human being. And therefore, her existence began at the Immaculate Conception. Okay? Our Lady began existing when she was conceived immaculately in the womb of St. Anne. So who is this speaker of the first reading? Again, it said, even from the very beginning, before the earth was made, and even before the heavens were arranged, I was there. Well, you'd have to go to the prologue of St. John. In the beginning was the word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The speaker of the first reading was the second person of the Blessed Trinity, who was already existing from all eternity with the Father and with the Holy Spirit. 
He was already existing. In the beginning was the Word. He was already with the Father. And the Word was with God. And from the very beginning, He was and is and always will be God. The Word was with God and was with God and was God. So the speaker of the first reading is actually the second person of the Blessed Trinity. Long, 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 long before he took flesh in the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary, long before he revealed himself through the Incarnation, in the first reading, he was already revealing himself as the eternal wisdom of God. So, uh, he loved, uh, he, 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 uh, I was with him forming all things and was delighted every day, playing before him at all times, playing in the world, and my delights were to be with the children of men. It's a very playful depiction of the second person of the Blessed Trinity. It, if you will only picture it, it gives you the impression that while the Father was creating things, His only begotten Son was already playing. Okay? He was playing. I was with Him playing before Him at all times. Playing in the world. Okay? So, He was there when the world was created because according to St. Paul himself, that the Lord Jesus, Son of God, okay, through Him all things were made and all things were made for Him. Okay? He was before all else. Everything was created through Him. Remember, God uttered the Word and whatever was uttered came into existence. Our existence itself is sustained by the second person of the Blessed Trinity. Okay. Our own existence until now is sustained by God the Son. All things were made through Him. All things were made for Him. Now, what has the first reading got to do with the Rosary of the Blessed Virgin Mary? Inasmuch as the reading did not refer to Our Lady, but it referred to the only begotten Son of God. Therefore, what has this reading got to do with the Rosary of Our Lady? Well, the second person, God the Son, said, My delights were to be with the children of men. Therefore, you children, hear me. Blessed are they that keep my ways. Hear instruction and be wise and refuse it not. Blessed is the man that hears me and watches daily at my gates and waits at the posts of my door. 
the eternal wisdom of God was saying, The man who waits for me at the posts of my gates will be blessed. The man who watches daily at my gates will be blessed. He that shall find me shall find life and shall have salvation from the Lord. So the man who looks for the Lord will find the Lord. Remember what our Lord said, Ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened unto you. Seek and you shall find. Seek the Lord and you will find Him. Now, how do we seek the Lord? We seek the Lord by meditating on His laws day and night. The man who meditates on the law of the Lord is the man who watches daily at his gates. The man who contemplates the mysteries of the Lord is the man who waits at the posts of his door. Wisdom, the eternal wisdom of God, will approach only the man who searches for him. Wisdom, the eternal wisdom of God, will approach and give himself only to the man who night and day contemplates his word, who night and day contemplates his laws. Wisdom, the eternal wisdom of God, draws near only to those who listen to his instructions, refuse it not, and keep his ways. And that is what the rosary actually is all about. The rosary is our daily meditation on the words of Christ. The rosary is our daily meditation on the life and the mysteries of our Lord and of His Blessed Mother. The rosary is the contemplation of the Gospels. The Rosary is the Gospel at work in contemplation. So when we pray the Rosary, we do not just utter repeated memorized prayers. But rather, the repetition of memorized prayers keeps our minds focused on the mysteries of Christ that are being presented to us. And remember, every decade of the rosary is supposed to be a meditation on a mystery of Christ so that our minds will not fly away so that our minds will not wander about our lips are preoccupied with the repetition of prayers that 
are close to our hearts. The repetition of the angelic salutation helps us focus our attention to the mystery, to the divine mystery that is being presented for contemplation. And that is why if we pray the rosary night and day, if we pray the rosary daily, it is as if we are watching daily at the gates of the eternal wisdom of God. It is as if we wait at the posts of His door. And when we persevere in searching for Him, it is only then that He shall reveal Himself to us in order to give us life. Now remember that the rosary is both an intellectual and an affective prayer. Intellectual because our minds assent to the mysteries that were revealed to us through sacred scriptures and apostolic traditions. And our hearts subject themselves to the discipline of the mind. We do not allow our hearts to wander elsewhere. But like Our Lady, our hearts and our minds are immersed in the mysteries of Jesus Christ. When the Archangel Gabriel entered into the house where Our Lady was and revealed to her the great decree of the Lord that she was chosen to be mother of God, what do you think was she doing? Was she engaging in pointless bantering and chatter? No. Holy pictures will always depict to us Our Lady kneeling at prayer in that precise hour when the archangel revealed himself to her. Mary was always depicted as contemplating things and keeping them in her heart. And she gives us her rosary as a means to contemplate on the mysteries of Christ. She who is the mistress of prayer. She guides us in our search for divine wisdom. She is our mistress. In the very same way, for example, that uh, novices have novice mistresses who will guide them into delving into the charism of their religious congregation. So also, in the school of prayer, our Lady is our novice mistress. She teaches us. She guides us. 
Therefore, dearly beloved, I admit that sometimes, no, oftentimes, the rosary can become very boring. There's not much creativity in praying the rosary. Not much creativity found there. And yet, the monotony of the pacing of the angelic salutation is actually the secret to entering into the depths of contemplation. Love is deepened by monotony. All we have to do is to be faithful to the rosary hour. Whether we feel like it or not. Prayer is a discipline. It is not dependent on one's high or low emotions. It is a discipline. You engage in it in a particularly monotonous rhythm so as to deepen love. The devil today is trying to present to us more novel forms of prayer that are designed to excite the senses with matching lighting effects, with matching sound effects, with drums and bugles that are meant to awaken the senses. But that is not the way of prayer. Just consider the monotony of the angelic salutation. It is meant to calm down our senses. It is meant to help us enter into our private rooms, the private rooms of our hearts where God is waiting for us. Our Lord Jesus says, when you pray, go and enter into your room. And the Father who sees what you are doing in secret will repay you. The rosary helps us enter into that private room wherein we find the wisdom of God, Jesus Christ, waiting for us. Let us persevere in praying the rosary. Let us persevere like the one who waits at the door night and day. We persevere, even if at certain times in the middle of the rosary, we accidentally fall into sleep. Fall into sleep we may, but let us keep on persevering. Let us keep watch daily at the gates of the wisdom of God. Let us wait at the posts of His door. Let us continue looking for Him. And one day, he whom you are looking for shall reveal himself to you. O Mary conceived without sin. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit.